Good day to you all, and welcome to this 28th day of February. It is day 59 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, someone who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible. And today, my friends, we are in the book of Numbers, chapters 24 through 27. Whole lot of numbers today. And then on to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Father, thank you for this day. Help us to see all that you'd have for us. Numbers 24 By now Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel, so he did not resort to divination as before. Instead, he turned and looked out toward the wilderness, where he saw the people of Israel camped tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, And this is the message he delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of a man whose eyes see clearly, the message of a man who hears the words of God, who sees visions from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob! How lovely are your homes, O Israel! They spread before me like palm groves, like gardens by the riverside. They are like tall trees planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. Water will flow from their buckets. Their offspring will have all they need. Their king will be greater than Agag. Their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose him, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows. Like a lion, Israel crouches and lies down. Like a lioness who dares to arouse her. Blessed is everyone who blesses you, O Israel, and cursed is everyone who curses you. King Balak flew into a rage against Balaam. He angrily clapped his hands and shouted, I called you to curse my enemies. Instead, you have blessed them three times. Now get out of here. Go back home. I promise to reward you richly but the Lord has kept you from your reward. Balaam told Balak, Don't you remember what I told your messengers? I said, even if Balak were to give me his palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of the Lord. I told you that I could say only what the Lord says. Now I am returning to my own people. But first, let me tell you what the Israelites will do to your people in the future. This is the message Balaam delivered. This is the message of Balaam, son of Beor, the message of a man whose eyes see clearly, the message of a man who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. I see him, but not here and now. I perceive him but far in the distant future. A star will rise from Jacob. A scepter will emerge from Israel. It will crush the heads of Moab's people, cracking the skulls of the people of Sheth. Edom will be taken over, and Seir, its enemy, will be conquered, while Israel marches on in triumph. A ruler will rise in Jacob, who will destroy the survivors of Ir, Then Balaam looked over toward the people of Amalek and delivered this message. Amalek was the greatest of nations, but its destiny is destruction. Then he looked toward the Kenites and delivered this message. Your home is secure, your nest is set in the rocks, but the Kenites will be destroyed when Assyria takes you captive. Balaam concluded this message by saying, Alas, who can survive unless God has willed it? Ships will come from the coast of Cyprus. They will oppress Assyria and afflict Eber. But they too will be utterly destroyed. Then Balaam left and returned home, and Balak also went on his way. Numbers 25 While the Israelites were camped at Acacia Grove, 
some of the men defiled themselves by having sexual relations with local Moabite women. These women invited them to attend sacrifices to their gods, so the Israelites feasted with them and worshipped the gods of Moab. In this way, Israel joined in the worship of Baal of Peor, causing the Lord's anger to blaze against his people. The Lord issued the following command to Moses, Seize all the ringleaders and execute them before the Lord in broad daylight, so his fierce anger will turn away from the people of Israel. So Moses ordered Israel's judges, Each of you must put to death the men under your authority who have joined in worshipping Baal of Peor. Just then, one of the Israelite men brought a Midianite woman into his tent, right before the eyes of Moses and all the people, as everyone was weeping at the entrance of the tabernacle. When Phinehas, son of Eleazar, and grandson of Aaron the priest, saw this, he jumped up and left the assembly. He took a spear and rushed after the man into his tent. Phinehas thrust the spear all the way through the man's body and into the woman's stomach. So the plague against the Israelites was stopped, but not before 24,000 people had died. Then the Lord said to Moses, Phineas, son of Eleazar and grandson of Aaron, the priest, has turned my anger away from the Israelites by being as zealous among them as I was. So I stopped destroying all Israel as I intended to do in my zealous anger. Now tell him that I am making my special covenant of peace with him. In this covenant, I give him and his descendants a permanent right to the priesthood. For in his zeal for me, his God, he purified the people of Israel, making them right with me. The Israelite man killed with the Midianite woman was named Zimri, son of Salu, the leader of a family from the tribe of Simeon. The woman's name was Cosby. She was the daughter of Zer, the leader of the Midianite clan. Then the Lord said to Moses, Attack the Midianites and destroy them because they assaulted you with deceit and tricked you into worshipping Baal of Peor, and because of Cosby, the daughter of the Midianite leader, who was killed at the time of the plague because of what happened at Peor. Numbers 26 After the plague had ended, the Lord said to Moses and to Eleazar son of Aaron the priest, from the whole community of Israel, record the names of all the warriors by their families. List all the men, twenty years old or older, who were able to go to war. So there on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan River, across from Jericho, Moses and Eleazar the priest issued these instructions to the leaders of Israel. List all the men of Israel, twenty years old and older, just as the Lord commanded Moses. This is the record of all the descendants of Israel who came out of Egypt. These were the clans descended from the sons of Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, the Hakanite clan named after their ancestor Hanak, the Puolite clan named after their ancestor Palu, the Hezronite clan named after their ancestor Hezron, the Carmite clan named after their ancestor Carmi. These were the clans of Reuben, their registered troops numbered 43,730. Palu was the descendant of Eliab, and Eliab was the father of Nemuel, Dothan, and Abarim. This Dothan and Abarim are the same community leaders who conspired with Korah against Moses and Aaron, rebelling against the Lord. But the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed them with Korah, and fire devoured 250 of their followers. This served as a warning to the entire nation of Israel. However, the sons of Korah did not die that day. These were the clans descended from the sons of Simeon. The Jemuelite clan named after their ancestor Jemuel. The Jamanite clan named after their ancestor Jamin. The Jaconite clan named after their ancestor Jachin. The Zorite clan named after their ancestor Zohar. The Shulite clan named after their ancestor Shaul. These were the clans of Simeon. Their registered troops numbered 22,200. These were the clans descended from the sons of God. The Zephonite clan, named after their ancestor Zephon. The Haggai clan, named after their ancestor Haggai. The Shunite clan, named after their ancestor Shuni. The Ozanite clan, named after their ancestor Ozni. 
the Irite clan named after their ancestor Iri, the Ardite clan named after their ancestor Oradi, the Aralite clan named after their ancestor Areli. These were the clans of Gad. Their registered troops numbered 40,500. Judah had two sons, Ur and Onan, who had died in the land of Canaan. These were the clans descended from Judah's surviving sons. The Shelonite clan named after their ancestor Shelah. The Perizzite clan named after their ancestor Perez. The Zerahite clan named after their ancestor Zerah. These were the sub-clans descended from the Perizzites. The Hezronites named after their ancestor Hezron. The Hamulites named after their ancestor Hamul. These were the clans of Judah. Their registered troops numbered 76,500. These were the clans descended from the sons of Issachar. The Tolite clan, named after their ancestor Tola. The Puite clan, named after their ancestor Pua. The Jashubite clan, named after their ancestor Jashub. The Shimronite clan, named after their ancestor Shimron. These were the clans of Issachar. Their registered troops numbered 64,300. These were the clans descended from the sons of Zebulun. The Seredite clan named after their ancestor Sered. The Elionite clan named after their ancestor Elon. The Jahalite clan named after their ancestor Jahail. These were the clans of Zebulun. Their registered troops numbered 60,500. The tribe of Manasseh. Two clans were descended from Joseph through Manasseh and Ephraim. These were the clans descended from Manasseh. The Makarite clan named after their ancestor Makir. The Gileadite clan named after their ancestor Gilead, Makir's son. These were the subclans descended from the Gileadites. The Lezerites named after their ancestor Lazar. The Helechites named after their ancestor Helech. The Asrielites named after their ancestor Asriel. The Shechemites named after their ancestor Shechem. The Shemodiites named after their ancestor Shemida. The Hepherites, named after their ancestor Hepher. One of Hepher's descendants, Zolophahad, had no sons, but his daughter's names were Mahala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirsa. These were the clans of Manasseh. Their registered troops numbered 52,700. The tribe of Ephraim. These were the clans descended from the sons of Ephraim. The Shethelhite clan, named after their ancestor Shethelah. The Becherite clan, named after their ancestor Becher. The Tahanite clan, named after their ancestor Tahan. This was the sub-clan descended from the Shethelhites. The Irnites, named after their ancestor Iran. These were the clans of Ephraim. Their registered troops numbered 32,500. These tribes of Manasseh and Ephraim were all descendants of Joseph. The tribe of Benjamin. These were the clans descended from the sons of Benjamin. The Belalite clan named after their ancestor Bela. The Ashbelite clan named after their ancestor Ashbel. The Aharamite clan named after their ancestor Aharem. The Shufamite clan named after their ancestor Shufam. The Hufamite clan named after their ancestor Hufam. These were the subclans descended from the Belaites. The Ardites named after their ancestor Ard. The Namites, named after their ancestor Naaman. These were the clans of Benjamin. Their registered troops numbered 45,600. The tribe of Dan. These were the clans descended from the sons of Dan. The Shuhamite clan, named after their ancestor Shuham. These were the Shuhamite clans of Dan. Their registered troops numbered 64,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Asher. The Imnite clan named after their ancestor Imna, the Ishvite clan named after their ancestor Ishvi, the Berite clan named after their ancestor Beriah. These were the subclans descended from the Berites. The Heberites named after their ancestor Heber, the Melchites named after their ancestor Melchiel. Asher also had a daughter named Serah. These were the clans of Asher. Their registered troops numbered 53,400. These were the clans descended from the sons of Naphtali. The Jahazelite clan, 
named after their ancestor Jahazil, the Gunite clan, named after their ancestor Guni, the Jezerite clan, named after their ancestor Jezer, the Shilamite clan, named after their ancestor Shilam. These were the clans of Naphtali. Their registered troops numbered 45,400. In summary, the registered troops of all Israel numbered 601,730. Then the Lord said to Moses, Divide the land among the tribes and distribute the grants of land in proportion to the tribes' populations, as indicated by the number of names on the lists. Give the larger tribes more land and the smaller tribes less land, each group receiving a grant in proportion to the size of its population. But you must assign the land by lot and give land to each ancestral tribe according to the number of names on the list. Each grant of land must be assigned by lot among the larger and smaller tribal groups. This is the record of the Levites were counted according to their clans. The Gershonite clan, named after their ancestor Gershon. The Kohathite clan, named after their ancestor Kohath. The Merarite clan, named after their ancestor Merari. The Libanites, the Hebronites, the Mahalites, the Mushites, and the Korahites were all subclans of the Levites. Now Kohath was the ancestor of Amram, and Amram's wife was named Jochebed. She was also a descendant of Levi, born among the Levites in the land of Egypt. Amram and Jochab became the parents of Aaron, Moses, and their sister Miriam. To Aaron were born Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithmar. But Nadab and Abihu died when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different than had been commanded. The men from the Levite clans who were one month old or older numbered 23,000. But the Levites were not included in the registration of the rest of the people of Israel because they were not given an allotment of land when it was divided among the Israelites. So these are the results of the registration of the people of Israel as conducted by Moses and Eleazar the priest on the plains of Moab beside the Jordan River across from Jericho. Not one person on this list had been among those listed in the previous registration taken by Moses and Aaron in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They will all die in the wilderness. Not one of them survived except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, son of Nun. Numbers 27 One day, a petition was presented by the daughters of Zelophehad, Mahala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirzah. Their father Zelophehad was a descendant of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, son of Joseph. These women stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the tribal leaders and the entire community at the entrance of the tabernacle. Our father died in the wilderness, they said. He was not among Korah's followers who rebelled against the Lord. He died because of his own sin. But he had no sons. Why should the name of our father disappear from his clan just because he had no sons? Give us property along with the rest of our relatives. So Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord replied to Moses, The claim of the daughters of Zelophehad is legitimate. You must give them a grant of land along with their father's relatives. Assign them the property that would have been given to their father. And give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If a man dies and has no son, then give his inheritance to his daughters. And if he has no daughter either, transfer his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. But if his father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan. This is a legal requirement for the people of Israel, just as the Lord commanded Moses. One day the Lord said to Moses, Climb one of the mountains east of the river and look out over the land I have given the people of Israel. After you have seen it, you will die like your brother Aaron. For you both rebelled against my instructions in the wilderness of Zin. When the people of Israel rebelled, you failed to demonstrate my holiness to them at the waters. These are the waters of Meribah at Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. Then Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, 
You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Please appoint a new man as leader for the community. Give them someone who will guide them wherever they go and will lead them into battle so the community of the Lord will not be like sheep without a shepherd. The Lord replied, Take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the Spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. Present him to Eliezer the priest before the whole community and publicly commission him to lead the people. Transfer some of your authority to him so the whole community of Israel will obey him when direction from the Lord is needed. Joshua will stand before Eliezer the priest who will use the Urim, one of the sacred lots cast before the Lord, to determine his will. This is how Joshua and the rest of the community of Israel will determine everything they should do. So Moses did as the Lord commanded. He presented Joshua to Eliezer the priest and the whole community. Moses laid his hands on him and commissioned him to lead the people, just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. 1 Corinthians 13 If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful, or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only a part of the whole picture. For when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child, but when I grew up, I put away childish things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Amen. We see things as a puzzling reflection. That's what Paul says here in Corinthians. And it becomes pretty obvious as we read through passages in the Old Testament like today's reading in Numbers. The same is true in our own lives. We can look back over the number of our days and it can seem like a puzzling reflection. We can struggle to know what it all means. But as we live our lives in the reality of Christ's embrace for us and the world, we can begin to experience greater peace. Clarity and certainty in this life are not promised, but God's peace is promised and the promise that all will be well in the end, when Christ is all and in all. But now, in the meantime, to discover his way of love, to value faith and hope and love above all things. These are the greatest things. Beyond clarity today is Christ. Christ is present right now with you through the puzzling reflections. He's come to give you his peace. He's come to encourage and strengthen you now. 
So let's keep our eyes fixed on him until all things become clear. Let's learn his way of love and offer that to this world. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. And that's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife and my daughters and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today in our time through the scriptures and in prayer. It is much appreciated indeed. Hey, just a reminder that our newsletter is about to drop here, and we would love for you to get it. You can sign up for it at dailyradiobible.com or in the show notes of today's podcast. Let me also ask you to do me a big favor. Would you subscribe to this podcast on YouTube? The Daily Radio Bible is about 100 subscribers shy of that 1,000 subscriber mark. Once we reach 1,000 subscribers, YouTube opens up a whole new level of functionality, making our ability to connect with you all the more rich and dynamic, and we would love for that to happen. And all you need to do is to subscribe on our YouTube page. If you go to YouTube, just type in Daily Radio Bible, and it'll take you right there to our page. And the last thing I want to do before I let you all go is to say thank you. Thank you to our partners. Thank you to the people that make this podcast possible. And they are you. They are the listeners. Brothers and sisters, just like yourselves, who come alongside Heather and myself and say, hey, we want to be a part of this. And because of them, we can give these podcasts out free of charge all around the world every day. So thank you, Michael Shearman. 
and Kyle Paulson, and Nancy and David A. Dean, to Karen McBride, to Robert Hudula, Karen Parrish, and Esperance Manochenka. Blessings to you, my sisters, my brothers, my co-laborers in this work of the Lord. And if you're listening today and you would like to join in with that group of folks, man, that is so appreciated and it is so needed. And all you need to do is head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and click on the donate link. You can also do that very same thing right in the show notes of today's podcast. So you can do it right here, right now, right on your phone. If you're old school and you prefer to do things through the U.S. Post, you can reach us at Daily Radio Bible 2748 Northeast Molini Way, Hillsboro, Oregon 97124. Well, hey, we've done it. We've done it again. And I plan on being back here again tomorrow, Lord willing. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being here. Until that time. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.